Dear learners, in this today's uh, topic, we will understand the need of non-governmental organization in a society. We will try to know about the developmental role being played by the NGOs. We will appreciate the intervention made by NGOs in the area of the tourism and will understand their role in creating tourism awareness and demanding a decisive role for the local communities in tourism development. Dear learners, NGOs are bodies which function free from the control of the government. These are said to be non-profit governmental bodies which work for the welfare of the society. They act as a mediator between the society and the government. When some issues are not solved or reached to the government, NGOs they play an important role in conveying these issues and some issues which are intentionally looked down by the government, then these NGOs look after those issues. So here, those people participate who want to make the world a better place for every individual who is suffering. In today's time, NGOs are playing a significant role because many times we can see that state or the governmental bodies fail to function. It doesn't take any financial help from the government. Some work on their own and some take finance from those who are willing to do good for society. These NGOs, they work on their own terms and principles. In these organizations, anyone can take membership and become their members. They can take membership by their own will and quit whenever they want to. Scholar Maishi says that it is not always free for everyone at times on demand people are enrolled. These NGOs set down their own rules, eligibility for the people to be a member. People who reach to these points get the membership and with already present members approval. That is why they are said to be voluntary functioning body. Now let's see the role of NGOs in Indian democracy. India has nearly 3 billion non-governmental organizations working in a variety of fields ranging from disaster relief to advocacy for marginalized and disadvantaged communities. There are there, the role and responsibility are immense in developing countries like India, which can list it as follows. Bridging the gap. NGOs endeavor to plug gap in the government's programs and reach out to the sections of uh, people often left untouched by state projects. For example, providing aid to migrant workers in this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Also, there are they are engaged in diverse activities relating to human and labor rights, gender issues, healthcare, environment, education, legal aid, and even research. They act as a role of enabler. Community level outfits and self-help groups are critical for bringing any change in the ground. In the past, such grassroots organizations have been enabled by collaborations with bigger NGOs and research agencies that have access to foreign funding. Acting as a pressure group, there are political NGOs that mobilize public opinion against government policies and actions also. To the extent such NGOs are able to educate the public and put pressure on public policy, they act as important pressure groups in the democracy. They also mobilize and organize the poor to demand quality service and impose a community system to accountability on the performance of grassroots government functionaries. Role NGOs also play in participative governments. Many civil societies initiatives have contributed to some of the path-breaking laws in the country, including the Environmental Protection Act 1986, Right to Education Act 2009, Forest Right 2006, and very famous is the Right to Information Act 2005. NGOs they also act as a social mediator. The social intermediation is an intervention of the different levels of society by various agents to change social and behavioral attitude with the prevailing social environment for achieving desired results of change in society. In Indian context wherein people are still steeped in uh, superstitions, faith, belief and customs, NGOs act as a catalyst and create awareness uh, among us the people. Also, tourism is basically a travel for recreation, leisure, family or business, usually of a limited duration. Tourism is not uh, like old times hospitality, it's a trade and source of profit for the countries. Tourism accounts for 30% of the world's trade of services. Tourism plays a very important role in the development 
and promotion of the country. Tourism is one of the main source of foreign exchange for the country. Tourism, they involve the transfer of the capital from one country to another. In the modern era, the role of NGOs, these non-governmental organizations, is found almost in every sphere of life. NGOs are voluntary organizations that are funded by the state, sometimes by foundations, by business or by the private person. It is seen that these NGOs are acting as a watchdog in the society. They act as critics and awareness agencies for the government, other organizations and common people. NGOs work at local, national or international level. Non-governmental organizations begin with the idea of addressing the problems of contemporary societies. We can say that NGOs act as agents of social change. NGOs, they also play a constructive role as facilitator, medi mediators to ensure equity and participation in the development process, even in the tourism field also. NGOs, they play a very important role in the tourism sector also. This role of NGO is based on the understanding of new social, political and economic processes that accept the reliance on market and private sector initiatives as the most effective mechanism for achieving economic growth, producing goods, provides most services to people, etc. Tourism policies are imposed by the government on the people, sometimes unilaterally. Sometimes these policies are not people-friendly and can deteriorate the environment of the tourism resort in one or another way. It is at the moment that the, these NGOs they play an important role. They not only make people aware of the negative effects of the policies, but also take legal help in revoking these policies which have negative effect. In our nation, tourism is not a voluntary activity. It is a well-developed industry. The government imposes these policies a well-planned way. The people have every right every right to differ with these policies. It is there where the role of NGOs is prominent. These NGOs they act as a catalyst and try to help the people to know about the negative and positive impacts of the governmental policies. These NGOs then help the poor and vulnerable people against the negative impacts of some policies. The NGOs are playing a crucial role in community development, which is likely to expand in the coming years. As a result of the negative impacts of mass tourism at many destinations, the NGOs are raising vital issues. These issues have to be taken into account in destination development, planning and marketing. This topic contains the role of the NGOs as agent of social change in the monolithic state structure. It further deals with their intervention in tourism and their role at the destinations. Dear learners, let's have a look on the NGO's intervention in tourism. The role of NGOs in tourism is based on its understanding of the new economic, social and the political processes that accept the reliance on market and private sector initiative as the most efficient mechanism for achieving economic growth, producing goods, providing most services to most people etc. Markets are also positioned as being a necessary condition for sustaining democracy because they provide the basis for strong centers of power independent of the state. People at the destinations have unilateral tourism policies imposed on them. Tourism policy identified hill, seashore, forest and places of worship as a potential site for tourism activity. At the same time, these policies refuse to recognize the traditional income generation methods or the people at tourism destination. And that the forest and seashore have their own natural and historical functions. We should not forget that tourism has emerged in the context of unresolved socio-economic structural issues such as land restroom pattern or the takeover of the traditional occupation by modern mechanized capital. Any initiative by the government in tourism by way of legislation or direct investment is envisaged within the framework of the tourism policy. Tourism is not a voluntary activity in nations like ours. It is planned and imposed on the people through various policies. At the same time, people have every right to differ from 
some wrong policies which means challenging the state structure and the political system. Such differences to formulate new models rather than alien models dictated by the government or outside agencies. In the face of the unhindered entry of international capital and successive alienation, perhaps it is difficult to agree that the future is in our hands. Sometimes it is on the positive side and if we take example of the critic of the developmental role of tourism, it emerges that tourism is viewed in the context of developmental model which has a political character. Development has taken place along with increased elitism, authoritarianism, militarism and various forms of state repression in different parts of the world. All of these are threats to the culture, economy and empowerment of the community. Development along with globalization threaten the sovereignty of the nation, eulogize a certain consumptive and luxurious lifestyle which is unsustainable by any means in most developing countries. Promote the net outflow of capital to affluent sections internally and it is based on the objectified view of the world where beaches, sanctuaries and mountains are seen as object of pleasure that negate people meaningfully relations between people and their environment. People in tourism destination do not have the luxury to debate various forms of the tourism nor can they afford to treat each violation at tourism destination as an aberration. Every undemocratic policy does violence to the people who seek some solution to their daily struggle for survival. It is here that NGO play an important role of the socio-economic development of the nation. These organizations are formed for various purposes based on ideas conceived by individuals, groups for certain objectives and goals. The distinguishing role of the NGO is its voluntarism. The fact that an NGO can only invite voluntary involvement in its activities and must therefore use discussions, bargaining, accommodation and persuasion in its dealing rather than bureaucratic control. But in the some analysis, it is the quality of participation that determines that legitimacy of decision making. Those who will be affected should have the right to be consulted in this process as well as form to express their needs. NGOs, they provide such a window. Dear learners, NGOs they play a very good role in tourism awareness. There are different types of role which they can play in tourism. One, there are tourism NGOs that are involved in criticizing the policy in the hope of making it just. These NGOs are located in the process to described above. There are other NGOs in tourism that work at tourism destination with problems directly born out of tourism development at the site. The former is not necessarily located in tourism destinations but plays a supportive role to the NGOs in tourism areas. There is a third kind of NGO, one involved in policy making on tourism a relatively new phenomena. Such NGOs, they play the role of conscientious building for narrower purposes of the state, missionary. By their very existence, however, these NGOs recognize the strength of the methodology of the other type of NGO and destructure the centralization of the decision-making processes. The tourism NGOs make a critic of the policy by Exposing the problems in it, these NGOs are research groups that make a detailed study report on the policy. Their findings are circulated among other researchers, activists, individuals, NGOs, governments, etc. After which they come up with an alternative policy critic. The government has sometimes takes into account the voices of these NGOs and their findings and inputs them into the policy. By this action, the government is involving the NGO in a sense of policy making. The NGOs consider their critiques and alternative policy models as a check or pressure against the government policies. A major aspect of a tourism NGO is to raise awareness among people about their power to intervene with the center of the power, with policies that they deemed fit. 
the seed of an alternative lie in the people's ability to differ on policies at one level which can be done with the inputs of the tourism NGOs and policy manifestations and tourism destinations by NGOs in tourism on the other. It also lies in the realization of the people in tourism destinations that the ultimate power lie in their hand in decision making since it is their little world that is at stake. It is this process of decision making that determines what kind of tourism a particular people region should have if this particular people or reason should have tourism at all. To differ on policy is not alternative policy making. It is to perpetuate and widen the area of dispute and enhance the collective identity of people in dispute. This act of differing with the dominant power structure will influence central political power with the positive and the negative impacts of earlier policies of the center, tourism NGOs can evaluate the effectiveness of present policies. NGOs role at the destination. NGOs in tourism destination areas work on tourism issues based on their need to understand changes affecting the communities in which they are working in due to tourism formed with interested for active participation through a process of awareness building training lobbying and advocacy these NGOs put destination specific issues in tourism on the national agenda they are resource centers which provide publication not only to the activist but also to tourists the travel trade and the resident also they provide direct support for local actions with resources and information for information collection and dissemination. These tourism NGOs collaborate with local groups at the tourism destinations to collect basic empirical facts and impacts. Brief facts sheets in basic English and vernacular language are produced. These NGOs they formulate guidelines for assessing tourism from a different perspective which is then used in various local situations. They also have a wider role to play. Tourism NGOs they monitor tourism policy and the legislation to see which will affect tourism issues. One of the most important functions related to monitoring is that of disseminating the information to the larger public. This dissemination is done through active engagement with the host population and the media. Through the medium of active involvement with the host population, the NGOs get this group of people to perceive their problems in the light of serious studies and analysis. In the case of the media, 
is one of the largest disseminator of information. A larger, broader sections of the society is confronted with these issues so that there can be a change in the way that the relative merits of tourism development are discussed. The ultimate purpose of all these interventions is, of course, to bring changes to the lives of people, not only in the destination area, but also the society at large, which many times remain a mute spectator to the change, affecting people in distant places. Dear learners, the role of NGOs in the process of developing a tourist destination is to bring together information from a multiplicity of sources rather than looking at tourism issues only from the economic needs and problems of a country, a state or a region in the process of development, where social marketing seeks to find appropriate solution to real problems. The approach of the NGOs to interact between people and products help to bring to the arena of the industry and rights and responsibility of all the role plays in the process of developing tourism. Dear learners, if we try to sum up this, it is important for NGOs to achieve and maintain a high degree of transparency in not just their work but also their financial. NGOs need to keep their income and expenditure open to public scrutiny. However, credibility of an NGO cannot be decided against the touchstone of the sources of funds, native or foreign. Also, the government must realize that seamless sharing of ideas and resources across national boundaries is essential to the functioning of a global community and it should not be discouraged unless there is reason to believe the funds are being used to aid illegal activities. This is a very important topic of discussion. The role of NGOs in tourism is important because they point out the imbalances in development along with the people's perceptions of that development. They create awareness among the people regarding the use or misuse of their resources and assets about tourism development. Besides offering a critic they also point out the direction in which such development should take place. They have demonstrated the negative impacts of tourism on the environment, land use, culture, etc. The tourism industry and organization must take note of the NGO's viewpoint while designing, developing and promoting tourism products. Dear learners, it is not that tourism, these NGO which are working in the field of the tourism, their role is limited to the policy making. Nowadays, they also act as a mediator between the government and the perfect implementation of the policies. Because how, like if I quote the example of the India, how India is working these days, government is making a policy, then they go ahead with its draft and make it public for the public opinion. There comes another role of the uh, NGOs. They discuss these drafts in public, they research, they provide all the necessary inputs to the government, which earlier the government lacked. Initially, these NGOs, they acted as a critic to the government policy, but now the NGO's role has been changed a lot. Now they are acting as a supplementary role to the government also. They are providing the government with the necessary inputs. They are providing government the necessary research that how these policies to be framed, that this new thing is required in this policy, so that this policy will be in favor of the common people. Generally, these NGOs, they play an important role for the proper dissemination, proper the knowledge, proper awareness of the policies. Even they train the local people also that how to get benefited of the government policies, government plans, government schemes. In case of the tourism, like tourism is also among us the one of the MSME area in India. But people, they are not very well aware about it. But government, how government is going to tell everybody that you can take benefit of these things. So, 
Sometimes these NGO they play a very very important role specifically in India because they what they do they train the local people they ask the local people they make them aware about these are the some of the policies good policies which government is offering and you can take the best benefit of these policies so here comes a very important role of the NGOs because they act as the proper facilitator, proper mediator for the policies, for the good policies also. Even at some places, the NGOs, they have increased the attraction of the tourism products at the destinations. And they are also very much particular about the what kind of tourism is developing at those areas. One of the very good example of some NGOs is like Taragram, very near to Orsha. There is one another NGO which is with the name of Rose Society, which is working in Kanda. There is another NGO with the name of Sangla Valley Sustainable Development Society, which is working in deep Himalayan area. So such kind of these products also increase that attraction of any particular destination. Thank you very much.